Hello, you're watching Calling All Stations and today I'm going to do a follow-up video to the question and answer session that I did last time. I'm firstly going to answer all of the questions that I asked um, and, and talk about some of the responses that I got and then in a separate video I'm going to do question and answer video number two where I'm going to ask some new questions. So let's get straight into things. The first question I asked was um, about my DCC concepts IP cobalt motor problem that I was having since pretty much day one on the layout. Basically to remind you if you're not already sick of this story is the IP cobalt motors have a self-centering mechanism um, that helps you uh, install the point and that comes switched on as default on some of the older models of, of the motor. I was having real trouble turning that function off so basically it meant every time I turned on the layout they do this self-centering thing and none of the points would be switched as a result and then you'd have to switch them and if you got a short circuit it would go through the process again. It was quite irritating. And I had this problem basically since the start uh, of, of my layout and I've been trying to solve this for, for like a year and a half. Sort of getting to the end of, I really just don't know what to do, getting to the end of my tether with it, I put it out to you and you guys just said, well, you know, you've tried everything, we've suggested everything as well and to be fair, you had, you'd suggested loads of good ideas and you said, well, just get in contact with um, DCC Concepts. What's the worst that could happen? Um, and a couple of you said that you'd had similar experiences with good customer service from those guys. So I thought, fine, let's give that a go. And I emailed them and I explained exactly the problem I was having. And to be fair on them, they got back straight away within 24 hours. Are they based in Australia? I think they are. So there was a slight time difference anyway, but they got back to me pretty quickly. In the morning, I had a response. So a chap called Peter gets back to me and he says, ah, oh, now the trick for young players with the Roco system, the accessory uh, address numbering system starts from a different datum to most other DCC systems. I'll get onto that in a minute. The Roco system is out by four, so you either need to address 194 or 202. And I'm just going to remind you there to turn the self-centering mechanism off on these IP motors. In theory, you set address 198 and it should turn off. And that was the problem I was having. I was setting address 198 and it wasn't working. So he's saying either address 194 or 202 because the Roco Z21 system is out by four datums, whatever a datum is, we'll get onto that. So I gave this a go and I tried programming address 194 and that didn't work. And then I tried 202 and that didn't work either. And I was like, oh, I, I really thought we were close. Then I realised that my Wi-Fi base station wasn't actually turned on, the, the phone was communicating with the Z21. So I tried again, 194, it still didn't work, and I was like, please, 202, work. And it does, and I'm absolutely thrilled. And it's it's amazing now I can turn the layout on, it doesn't self-centre. Probably put a little uh, a clip of that happening now. So it means when I turn the layout on, it doesn't reset every time. That was really annoying. So this was a bit of an interesting revelation that the Roco uh, Z21 is not addressing things as you'd expect them to. So I sent an email back basically to say thank you. I was really pleased with their service. So I just wanted to say thanks first of all, but I also had another couple of questions which I asked. So I said, I'm curious, what is a datum and why does the Roco system differ by four? Does this mean in theory that if I took a Loco and used it on say the Hornby Elite, would the address also be out by four? And also why did the newer IP motor I bought, and don't forget if you go back to the, the last video, you'll find out I bought a, an individual uh, IP motor way after my initial bash and it worked fine and there was no self-centering. So I asked um, why that one worked and none of the other ones did. So this time somebody called Jim Hamilton got back to me, so Peter's obviously managed up, fair play, and he said that the offset by four is a historical thing and they have actually a detailed PDF on their website which I'll put a link to in the description. There is a Z21 update that will also enable you to have a permanent fix for this, which is basically a tick box, so I will look into that as well. But from memory, the plus four offset does not occur on recent software versions for the elites. Basically, what he's saying is if I took um, one of my locos that was, say, address number 20, and I took it and used it on a Hornby Elite or one of the Backman systems, 
it would not function under address 20 on Hornby Elite. You'd have to control it using address 16 because don't forget it's it's actually thinking it's four points lower. So to program address 202, what's actually happening in real life is that's address 198. So it's four below in real life. So whatever I've got addressed here, take four off and that's actually the real DCC address for everybody else concerned. And as far as he's aware, he says it doesn't happen on the ESU ECOS or NCE controllers. Hope that means something for you. Doesn't mean much for me. So then he goes on to say the newer IP motors that they've released has slightly different software and has the self-centering turned off by default. So basically when I bought that new individual one, it was already off. And when I was programming, I was thinking that I was doing it correctly and that it had turned off and I'd done 198 and it was all fine. But in reality, it was already off anyway. So what I was doing was basically basically meaningless. So yeah, that's a really interesting thing that the Roco Z21 is not addressing things the way that everybody else would expect them to address. So what it's doing is it's addressing things for higher than it, it should be. So, as I said, if, if you've got a loco coming from uh, the e-link system, let's go the other way this time. If you bring a loco to my layout and you've programmed it on the e-link system as address 16, it would not respond as address 16 on my layout. I'd have to control it as address 20. And that's really weird. And if you read into the document about why this happens, it was historically this was so that Roco would be compatible for really old DCC chips and non-standard uh, DCC uh, systems basically so uh, it would work with kind of legacy devices so DCC I think came to the UK slightly after some of these European systems and I don't think we had so much of a problem but because Roco is a European it's a German uh, manufacturer they obviously wanted to cater for really old DCC systems therefore this is a historical thing that actually inside the box on the Z21 it's actually doing something slightly different so that's a bit of a weird one, um, but I'm really thrilled that I've actually got an answer to that and now I know how to program um, the self-centering mechanism with the Roco Z21 and I hopefully, hopefully now you guys know how to do that as well. Okay, question number two, I think it was number two, I asked was about how you guys keep your layouts clean and I wasn't talking about how to clean track, I've got quite a good routine about how to clean track, I was talking about how to sort of dust locos and how to keep sort of platform areas dust free. A couple of responses on this. Um, somebody said, why don't you put a sort of a dust sheet over the layout when you're not using it? And I have had thought about that in the past and getting sort of a pattern that looked kind of quite sort of underground moquette sort of style. And then I just sort of bring it over the layout when I wasn't using it. But I do like to look at the layout when I'm not using it. And it's just a nice thing to sort of walk past and have a glance at and see the locos out. So, it's, it's, it's a perfectly reasonable solution and it's a perfectly easy solution to do is obviously cover up your layout with a dust sheet if you're not using it, quite obvious. So for me, I quite like looking at the layout, so I, I didn't opt to go with that uh, recommendation. Um, a couple of people sort of recommended some brushes that are sort of... Um, uh, they attract static, so they will pick up the dust and I will investigate them further. That's mostly all the response I had on that, so I'll keep you posted and I'll probably look into these brushes and see if they're any good. Some people also did recommend just sort of going over it with uh, a vacuum cleaner or a handheld vacuum cleaner very lightly. Um, I'm sort of reluctant to do that in really sort of you know the nooks and cranny areas where there's really fine detail because I'm just worried that it's gonna rip up um, stuff that's glued down and to be honest I've tried that in the past and it, it sort of has ripped up the odd bit and the odd sort of person has gone flying into the into the vacuum cleaner which I've had to retrieve. I will keep you posted on, on how the cleaning thing is but if you've got any more ideas don't forget to comment comment down below. Um, and the final question that I asked you was about layout automation and this is going to lead on to a question in my new question video which I will put a link to somewhere. So I asked is there any simple layout automation uh, out there? So what I wanted to achieve was basically just really simple stuff, moving a loco from A to B, maybe throwing a, a turnout and then moving another loco to A to B. In its most simple form, I was quite happy to just move a loco back and forth. 
and just repeat that. I miss that of my old continuous layout of running just a train and I'd be doing something else in the room in the office and a train would be nicely running around. I basically wanted to replicate that but because I've got an end-to-end -end layout now I wanted it to just go back and forth and back and forth. So I looked into various different pieces of software. In the end I settled on a piece of software called iTrain which I've done a, a sort of introduction tutorial to because I think it's a really good piece of software and what you get in the free version is, is quite useful uh, and certainly useful for me because my um, tablet it packed in that I was controlling the layout with but even saying that I still couldn't get it to do automation without things like feedback loops and block detection which is slightly more uh, complicated to set up and which I haven't got into yet but then I had a bit of a revelation and I thought well I don't need iTrain to do the automation I can just get a keyboard and mouse recorder record the clicks that I'm doing and then repeat it back and it should just do the automation through me leaving iTrain open and the computer thinking that I'm moving the mouse which is actually a recorded piece of software. Tried this out and yes it does work however with the slight caveat of it's quite a crude way of doing basic automation. Yes it works but it relies on there being no faults with the track, no faults with the loco. If it accidentally sort of slips or loses power, even for a brief second, the computer doesn't know anything about that and it will keep running the software regardless. And it will keep repeating the same uh, processes that I've recorded with a mouse or keyboard recorder. Over time, and if you run the program two or three or five times over and over, the loco starts to end its program in a different place where it started and as a result the the trains are then start to fall in the wrong place and you could end up bumping into buffers or, or going over the wrong uh, turnout but I did have a, a play with this one evening and I have a video of it sort of me not doing anything and it all sort of running itself but quite quickly you get this drift effect where the computer has no feedback about where the locomotives are because you're basically just running a, a recorded mouse program and the loco then ends up in a slightly different place at the end at the end of its program and it's it's not a great distance it might be the difference of one centimeter but by the time it's gone back to another destination then it's one centimeter out and if you keep repeating it then it's two centimeters out at the, the end of its second run and then it's three and then it's four and before you know it it's bumped into some buffer stops or it, it's, it's not gone over a set of turnouts properly yes that is one way of doing very simple layout automation get a piece of software that does control um, your layouts be that iTrain be it Big Bear be it JMRI whatever you want to do and then record some movements with a keyboard or mouse recorder maybe I'll put a link in the, to, to the description for the one I was using and then just basically get that to repeat but you will find that it's quite crude and it is sort of it doesn't do what you expect it to do so say the train stalls and then you give it a nudge the program thoughts thinks that it's it's continued to run so it will not end up in the correct location so what i was trying to achieve um, although simple is probably slightly unobtainable without some additional hardware. Anyway, that brings me to the end of the answers for video one, for the question and answer video one. Most importantly, I hope that it's it's provided some light for those of you who use the Roco Z21 and are thinking about the uh, Cobalt motors, the IP digital ones, and that offers a solution to how that is resolved. And real good credit to DCC Concepts, they're really quick with a reply, really friendly, really great customer service. Um, if, if all companies were like that, I think the world would be a better place, wouldn't it? Hopefully that has uh, provided a solution for you. It, it did for me and I'm absolutely thrilled that that's working. Keep thinking about the, the cleaning thing. I will get back to you on that. And stay tuned for what I'm going to do with automation. I will be asking a question about that soon. So you've been recording all stations. Give us a subscribe, a like, a retweet on Twitter, and I will see you soon.
Thanks, guys. See you soon. Police sirens outside. This is just all going on. Um, so let's get straight away. Uh, 